Hi parents, today I'm going to explain some of the things we do in our classroom. First, we're going to talk about listener responding in context. Typically, we use listener responding in context after we've observed the kids um, for the first month at school and we see what they can do and can't do and see whether or not they struggle to follow directions. Um, so listener responding in context is getting them to follow directions. It's the abil ability to respond to others verbal behavior or language and we want to get instructional control. We want to be able to give them a direction and have them do it. So with listener responding in context, we use things like give, touch, put in, put on, push, take, slide, open, close, turn, stack, squeeze, put things together, those kind of ideas. Um, we don't necessarily use all of them in my classroom. Once we get instructional control, we test them in all areas of the table, which I'll explain in a minute, and then we move on to the next skill. So what I mean by all the areas around the table is typically I start with an item in front of the student and I use my direction. So if they can't do that, then I'll put it in their hand, I'll give it to them, let them have it in their hand, and then see if they can follow, follow the direction. But what we want them to do is to be able to do it in front of them, on the right of the table, on the left of the table, in the middle of the table, far up here on the table, and see if they can follow those directions anywhere because we're listening to the direction. Could be doing something as simple as telling me to give a toy. And I'm going to use some examples here in a minute, but I wanna show you, I brought things from my house. I don't have a little one at my house, so this was hard but I'm just trying to show you, you can use anything. So I actually have a little baby doll at my house, not sure why. Um, we have some figures that my son had in a toy I just happened to find. A car, a ball, ice cream cone, Mickey Mouse of course, a duck, I have some dice because I couldn't find any blocks and I have a chip. I have a cup, a spoon, a bowl, and then a book. So these are the items that I just happened to find in a few minutes of going around the house quick so that we could use this, use them to make this video. Okay, so let's start with put in. So if I put the cup, now you won't be able to see if I put it too far, so we'll try here. And I say put in, I want the student to follow that direction. Put in. You missed. Good job. So with doing this, you can use food as a reinforcer if you'd like. Um, today I brought something different. I brought bubbles and these also disappear. So they're not a problem getting back. So you can blow some bubbles if your student likes bubbles, your student, your child likes bubbles. Um, so that was put in. So let's try put on. And you can use any objects. I know when I've sent directions home to parents, I've put certain objects on there to kind of give you an idea, but you really can use just anything. Um, put on. Good job. So there we did put on. Let's try. Let's try push. I have a car and I'm going to put it on the table and it's something that a lot of kids like to play with, but pushing is a normal thing that you would do with it. So push. Did I push it too far? Push. Good job. So if they don't do something correct, um, listener responding in context is something that you can show them or you can actually take their hand and do it hand over hand. Um, and help them out. So those are things that you want to do with a child that's learning. You don't want to give them a direction to say something because you can't reach inside and pull their voice out. So you want to be able to help them to learn the direction. Let's see. Let's do. Oh, we can try give with the car. Give. Give. Give car. Thank you. Good job. We struggled a little bit with that one. We have to encourage it a little bit, so let's reinforce. 
they're blowing away, not blowing towards you. And put on, um, let's do touch. Touch is something that's hard. I'm gonna use a book for touch. Now a book is something that a child wants to pick up and read normally, but I just want them to touch it. What I want them to do is isolate that finger and touch because we're going to use that eventually with picture cards. But sometimes they do this as touch and that's okay, but we wanna make make them learn to isolate that finger. So if they do it this way, that's good, but then we wanna to try to get them to isolate that finger. So you might wanna grab their hand and help them to do that one finger. Touch. Touch. Oh, you isolated it for me. I didn't think you were going to. Good job. All right, so this is listener responding in context. Um, so you want them to follow the direction that you're giving them. You want them to perform something that's an instruction that's out of context. So, uh, something like touching the cup or putting something in the cup, that's, that's not normal. Usually they drink out of a cup. So we want them to follow the direction and we want them to understand that we can use anything for those directions. So it doesn't have to be a cup. It doesn't have to be a toy. It can be anything as long as they're following your direction. And then you'll want to, if once they can do that, what we do at school is test to see if they can do it in front of them, far away from them, on the right, on the left, in the middle, all those kind of things to see what they can do. And then we kind of move them out of that area and start a new section. So hopefully that helped you. And if that's something that I'm sending you for your child to do, um, watching the video multiple times will help you. And if you have questions, of course, you can call me or email me. And I'll see you soon. Bye.